Russia's ambitious lunar mission, Luna 25, has suffered a major setback. The spacecraft lost control and crashed onto the moon's surface. This is a disappointing end to Russia's first moon mission in nearly 50 years. The country's space agency, Roscosmos, confirmed this unfortunate event. Earlier, the Luna 25 mission has transmitted a high-resolution image of the lunar surface. To be specific, the Zeeman crater near the moon's south pole on its far side. On the other hand, India's Chandrayaan-3 is approaching the moon's surface and is set to land on August 23rd. Chandrayaan has also shared stunning images of the moon, here are a few. So how is the BBC covering these two significant events? Take a look at this video. This is a humiliating blow for Moscow, but Russia's space industry has been in decline for years, partly because of Western sanctions, but also because for the Kremlin, the priority is the military and not civilian space programs. The war in Ukraine has led to isolation. After Russia's full-scale invasion last year, international agreements on space were torn up. You cannot buy uh, certain electronics um, unless you have uh, worldwide cooperation, even if they have 20 years like they had uh, with the Luna Globe and Luna 25. Um, it's still uh, not enough. And India is in the race now too. Chandrayaan-3 is due to touch down on the moon on Wednesday. If India succeeds, that will be another blow to Russia's reputation in space. Let's break down the various elements of the comments made by the news presenter. This is a humiliating blow for Moscow. This statement seems to be expressing an opinion rather than objective news reporting. The use of the term humiliating blow may be seen as subjective and biased, as it assumes that Russia's reputation is significantly damaged by the failed moon mission. While a failed mission can be disappointing for any country, the severity of its impact on a nation's reputation can be debated. Russia's space industry has been in decline for years, partly because of Western sanctions, but also because for the Kremlin the priority is the military and not civilian space programs. This statement brings up valid points about the challenges faced by Russia's space industry. Western sanctions indeed impact a nation's ability to access certain technologies and resources required for space missions. The assertion about the Kremlin's priorities is a matter of perspective and may oversimplify a complex policy landscape. While it is also possible that Russia is showing the Western nations that even with heavy sanctions, they can undertake cutting-edge missions. The war in Ukraine has led to isolation. After Russia's full-scale invasion last year, international agreements on space were torn up. The invasion of Ukraine did result in diplomatic isolation for Russia because Russia's invasion of Ukraine violates Article 2.4 of the UN Charter, which states, the UN member states should refrain from the use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state. However, complex geopolitical situations can be oversimplified when connected directly to space exploration, potentially leading to misconceptions or biased interpretations. But the most out of context comment made by the news presenter might be this. If India succeeds, that will be another blow to Russia's reputation in space. The news presenter said, India is in the race now too. If India succeeds, that will be another blow to Russia's reputation in space. However, this is another classic case of poorly done research by the BBC. Let me tell you why. The founder of India's space organization, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai once said, there are some who question the relevance of space activities in a developing nation. To us, there is no ambiguity of purpose. We do not have the fantasy of competing with the economically advanced nations in the exploration of the moon or the planets or manned spaceflight. But we are convinced that if we are to play a meaningful role nationally and in the community of nations, we must be second to none in the application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. The quote from Dr. Vikram Sarabhai further strengthens the argument against the reporter's claim of direct competition between India and Russia in space exploration. Dr. Sarabhai's statement clearly outlines India's perspective on space activities and emphasizes their focus on applying advanced technologies to address real-world challenges rather than engaging in competitive rivalry. 
India's space program is driven by a commitment to societal betterment, scientific advancement, and technological application. This perspective aligns with the cooperative and collaborative nature of modern space exploration, where countries often share knowledge, resources, and technologies for the collective advancement of humanity's understanding. Given this context, the news presenter's assertion that India's success would be a blow to Russia's reputation in space seems disconnected from the broader principles and objectives of both nations' space programs. It appears that the reporter might not have taken into account the historical ties, cooperative endeavors, and the core values that guide India's approach to space exploration. Before we address the question, let's explore how the Soviet Union significantly contributed to advancing India's space mission. Training and education, transfer of knowledge, launch services. India became a participant in the Soviet Intercosmos program, a collaborative effort designed to assist the Soviet Union's allies with both crewed and uncrewed space missions. The USSR offered training opportunities and education to Indian scientists and engineers in fields related to space technology. For instance, on April 19, 1975, the Soviet Union aided India in launching its inaugural satellite, Aryabhata, for scientific research. While primarily developed by India, the satellite received essential components from the Soviet Union, including solar cells, batteries, thermal paints, and tape recorders. The second satellite in the series, named Baskara, was launched on June 7, 1979, by the Soviet Union. Baskara, a part of the Satellite for Earth Observation CO series, aimed to assess India's natural resources and conduct meteorological research. The Soviet Union also committed to assisting in sending India's satellites, Baskara 2 and 3, into space. These launches were provided without cost to India, and in return, India pledged to share all the information and data collected by these satellites. India received lunar samples from the Soviet Union for analysis by its own scientists. Upar se Bharat kaisa dikhta hai aapko? Sare jahan se acha. A significant collaboration between the Soviet Union and India was the Indo-Soviet manned spaceflight program during the 1980s. Notably, Indian astronaut Rakesh Sharma became the first Indian citizen to travel to space aboard a Soviet spacecraft. Post the collapse of the Soviet Union, India continued its space collaboration with Russia. In 1995, India launched the IRS-1C satellite using the Russian Molnia M rocket, marking the final satellite launched on a Russian vehicle. Furthermore, Russia played a role in India's human spaceflight program. In June 2019, ISRO and Russia's Glavkosmos signed an MOU to train four astronauts, comprising a group captain and three wing commanders of the Indian Air Force, who were shortlisted for the Gaganyaan mission. So, from providing space launches to India, extending technical support, facilitating human spaceflight training, and more, Russia played a pivotal role in India's advancements in space technology. And I haven't touched upon Russia's contributions to India's defense cooperation, particularly during the 1971 war. Therefore, the news presenter's statement suggesting that India's success would be a blow to Russia's reputation might oversimplify the nuanced dynamics of their relationship. While competition exists among nations, there is also a sense of collective advancement in humanity's exploration of space. Nations' successes should ideally be celebrated within this context, rather than being viewed as zero-sum victories or defeats. Indian social media users were disappointed about the loss of Luna 25, because Indians knew the pain of such failure in Chandrayaan 2, that happened four years ago. Indians even stated that they expect a more successful mission from the Russians next time and expressed their hopes for the upcoming mission. <laughs>